Hi everybody, my name is Flowey and this is Flowey's Corner, your free cat channel on YouTube. Um, today I want to talk about the basic part design tutorial from the free cat wiki that you can see here. It's under the link part design tutorial 017 and you see this, uh, the completed part in this image here. There is a text version of the complete process of creating this part down here and I thought it could be a great opportunity for me to show this tutorial in version 019 in FreeCAD. In this tutorial some things are done like um, mapping sketches on 3D on 3D geometry like this back face here of the geometry. These are things that are not considered a good style in FreeCAD because it triggers the topological naming problem which you might have heard about in one of my other videos. And so I want to do a very clean method of construction here for this basic part design tutorial. So let's start. We start in FreeCAD 019 from the 2nd January 2020 it's uh, 23578 from the github repository. Let's start by clicking new file, create a new empty document. Now we are here in the part design environment. The first thing we want to do is to add a new body element. Therefore we click on this symbol, create a new body and make it active. Under the new body element we select the origin, make it visible by pressing the spacebar. And then we start a sketch on the XZ plane. We select the XZ plane and select new sketch. We select the polyline tool from the sketcher menu. Select the origin point as our first point, second point a little bit up to the right, a little bit further to the right for the next point, then down to the horizontal axis again, and then for the last point back to our origin point. We have a horizontal constraint on this edge here. We have a vertical constraint on this edge here. That's correct. So the next thing we want to do, we give it, we want to give it some dimensions. So we select the bottom edge here, go to the horizontal distance. Let's make this 26 millimeters and let's call it X underscore dim for the X dimension. Let's take this edge here, click on the vertical distance. It's also 26 millimeters. Let's call it Z underscore dim. And the last thing what we want to do, we want to give this edge the horizontal distance five millimeters. Then we're fully constrained and I would say we could leave the sketch now, but one thing I want to add, I want to add a dimension for the angle here and because it's already fully constrained, I select angle constraint, use these two edges, go to reference to make it not over constrained and just call it angle front, angle underscore front. So this dimension is just a reference. Okay, let's go to close. We add a name to the sketch, or right click, rename, base, profile is the name for my sketch. And now let's do the first pad command. We select the base profile, go to pad. The pad is symmetric to the XZ plane, therefore we select symmetric to plane and give it a length of 53 millimeters. Okay, so the next thing what we want to do is to add some boxes to this side and this side of the geometry. Therefore, we go to the XZ plane again, new sketch. If we sketch here in this area, the 3D body might cover our sketch. So therefore, we select the section view here in the sketcher menu. And now we can sketch here without the body is hiding our geometry. We go to a rectangle, draw a nice rectangle here. The horizontal distance we already know. We click it, horizontal distance. Click this little button here for the expression manager and its base profile constraints 
dot x underscore dim for the x dimension. So the dimension is taken automatically from our other sketch. So, and now we have to set the height for the box here. Select the front edge, vertical dimension, and it's 16,7 millimeters. And we're right. Let's close it. So if we have our sketch visible here, you will see that the sketch is created right in the middle of our already geometry. So we have to select the sketch and change its position. It has to be set to a different Z value here. If you change the Z value here, you will see that it goes to the outside of our geometry. How far has it to be set? And that's pretty simple. It's just the half of the length of this first pad here. The pad here, the length of the pad is 53 millimeters. So the sketch 001 here has to be set to a Z value. Let's go to the expression manager of minus pad length divided by two minus 26.5 millimeters. And then we have automatically set our position of the sketch number two. Let's call it sketch box. Has to be set out here. And then we can go to the pad command again. Pad it seven millimeters wide and we're pretty much there. So the next thing we want to do, we want to remove material from our upper corner, our upper left corner. Therefore, we select the YZ plane, go to new sketch, and there let's draw another rectangle to remove geometry. So what, what are we going to do? Let's click the rectangle here, draw it somewhere here, it's now hidden again by the geometry, so we select the section view. The height of our rectangle is five millimeters. And the, and the width of our rectangle is 11 millimeters. Now we need to know the position. Where does the rectangle has to be positioned correctly? It's two degrees of freedom. And we know the upper corner from our first sketch. So select the upper corner, the origin, vertical distance, and the value has to be set to base profile, constraints, C underscore dimension, dim. Okay. And then we have the right position in Z axis, and we also know the horizontal position. Therefore, click these two points. Horizontal distance, it's 26.5, but let's do this about over the expression manager. It's called pad, length divided by two. Okay, okay. And there we go for our rectangle. So next thing, we select the sketch. Let's call it upper corner. Go for the pocket command through all. It's now going to pocket into the wrong di direction. So therefore we have to select reversed and then it pockets in the right direction. That's good. So looking good, yes. And the next thing we want to do, we select the pad and the pocket. Go to the mirror command, mirrored feature, select the reference and the reference is the X Z plane here and we mirrored our pocket and our pad around the same plane. So and the last thing that we want to do we want to create a sketch for the hole in the middle of our geometry. It's not recommended to draw on faces of the 3D geometry otherwise we could simply select this face and go for a new sketch and put our sketch exactly on this face, but this is not recommended to do, so we are not going to do this. We have to define a datum plane. We select the X, Y plane, create a new datum plane, and then we have to rotate it. 
we have to rotate it around the local y-axis. Let's test minus 50 degree. That's already looking very good. Increase it a little bit to minus, yeah, you see minus 50 is a little bit too small and minus 51 is a little bit too big. So, and now it comes into play why we created this little angle in our first sketch. So here we can insert our angle front dimension that we created in the first sketch. Go to the expression manager, base profile constraints, angle underscore front. I have to add a minus before the expression, go to OK and OK. And whenever we change the angle in our first sketch, the datum plane will follow. And this datum plane can be used to create a new geometry on. So let's click a new sketch. Start the new sketch. Pretty simple here. Make it symmetric to the horizontal axis. Select two points, horizontal axis. Make symmetric. We have um, the same dimension for the width and the height. So make it equal. Select the vertical constraint 17 millimeter and we have a distance from the bottom of 7 millimeters. So we can select these two points, horizontal distance 7 millimeters, close, and we're ready to go. We can hide the datum plane by pressing the space bar and now we have a nice sketch on that face without attaching it really to that face. So what we can do next, we can rename the sketch to center hole, for example. And now you could have the idea to use the pocket command. We select center hole, go to pocket, but the pocket will only work perpendicular to this face here. And that's not what we want. So we won't reach our goal with this command here, unfortunately, but we don't want to make things too complicated. So instead of using the pocket command here, we could use the subtractive sweep command here. We make our base profile visible by pressing the space bar. And then we select the center hole, the subtractive sweep, and then we add the path to sweep along. Add edge, we just select the lower edge here from our sketch, from our first sketch and go to OK. And then we are basically done. That's it. No magic, not drawing on any faces. And let's test how stable our model is. We change some values in the base profile. For example, we go for um, instead of 26, we go for 42 millimeters down here, close everything still works. Let's change this back to 26. Let's change the height to 35 millimeters. Close. Everything is still there. We can change, for example, the width, the upper width here to 10 millimeters. So we have a complete different angle now, but still everything is correct. We are not getting in trouble with the um, topological naming and everything works pretty fine. So that's my solution to the basic part design exercise without drawing on 3D geometry, without using faces as it's done here in the tutorial here. So I hope you learned something from my tutorial. Please rate and subscribe, give me a comment, have fun doing free cat and goodbye.